Raila Odinga is a very happy man this evening. A committee of the African Union has made some recommendations that if enacted, it will be just a matter of time before Raila Odinga is declared the new chair of the African Union Commission. Let's have a look at the rules. Update on the election process of the chairperson, deputy chairperson, and commissioners of the African Union Commission. The Permanent Representative Committee, PRC, has agreed on the following recommendations and which will be incorporated in the draft decision to be presented to the Executive Council. Number one, interregional rotation. The PRC agreed on approach to option B, which means that Eastern Africa region will be eligible to nominate candidates for the position of chairperson, while the Northern Africa region will be eligible to nominate candidates for the position of deputy chairperson. So, Eastern Africa region is going to nominate the chair, and then the Northern African region will nominate the deputy. And in Eastern African region, there are only two candidates who have so far declared their candidature. That's Raila Odinga and Somalia's Fawzia Hassan. Those are the only two candidates in Eastern Africa who have declared their candidature. So if an election was to be done today, we'll only have those two candidates. And then number two, interregional rotation. Interregional rotation should be based on regional consultations and not on the English alphabetical order. Number three, Rotational gender parity, the PRC agreed on an application of gender rotation in the application of the principle of rotational gender parity. The PRC position aligns with Kenya's interpretation of this principle. Thus, both Eastern and Northern African, Africa regions are at liberty to nominate candidates of either gender for the posts of chairperson and deputy chairperson respectively in the AUC election 2025. The issue of gender will not come into play. Eastern Africa, Northern Africa, they can nominate a man or a woman. So nobody will be locked out because of gender. It can be a man or a woman. Number four, allocation of commissioners' portfolios. The six commissioners' posts will be open for competition by candidates nominated by the three remaining regions, Central, Southern, and Western African regions. Besides the chair and the deputy, there are also six commissioners post to be filled. This will go to Central, Southern, and Western Africa regions. Yes, I think that's well understood. And a key point from this is that Eastern Africa will nominate the chair. And in Eastern Africa, the candidates are only two. Raila and Fauzi Hassan of Somalia. No any other candidate apart from the two has declared. So it will be Raila and Hassan. I want us to put all this into perspective for Kenyans to understand what this means. If you are watching us but you have not yet subscribed, subscribe, give this video like let's continue p 
PRC is a committee of the African Union that we can say formulates the rules, the rules of engagement. And they have just made that decision that the chair of African Union Commission has to come from Eastern Africa. And in Eastern Africa, we have only two candidates, Raila Odinga and Somalia's Fawzia Hassan. And from the look of things in terms of experience and even networks, I don't think you can compare Raila and this Fawzia Hassan. And if you look at other potential candidates in Eastern Africa, we have Uru Kenyatta and Jakaya Kikwete. Uhuru through his Jubilee party has already endorsed Raila Odinga. Madam Samia Sulu of Tanzania has also endorsed Raila Odinga. So I'm also not just seeing any chance where these two candidates, Uhuru or even Jakaki Kwete, will throw their weights again in the ring. This leaves Raila Odinga as the favorite candidate to win that seat. And again for Somalia's Fauzian, I won't be wrong to say that there are very high possibilities that she might withdraw from the race to support Trailer Odinga. Because again, it's all about mobilization. There is no country we have so far seen in Eastern Africa supporting her candidature. So maybe as the race hots up, he might just see the, the heat is just too much and she will just with the drone to support Araila's candidature. But even if she fails to do that, then still, then I'm not just seeing her winning that seat or beating Raila Odinga. And now, what does this mean, ladies and gentlemen? If you look at it very objectively, Raila and Ruto, their interests have converged in that they all want Raila Odinga to win that seat. Ruto wants Raila Odinga to win that seat as a way of exiting him from 2027 presidential election. Raila on his part may want to win this seat as a strategy to rebrand himself maybe for another possible 2027. Because if Raila wins this seat, then that's going to make him even stronger in that he's going to be in a position to mobilize for funds and even to create new networks. We were told and made to believe that in 2022, the West rigged out Raila Odinga. Through this post, Raila Odinga can create new networks and a very strong rapport with that West. If it's actually true, is the West that rigged him out. This post will enable him create that kind of a good rapport that will just aid him come 2027. Yesterday, Moses Kuria said, Raila will win this seat, but he will resign after two years to contest for the presidency. And I agree with Moses Kuria that that's a possibility. And I know Raila Odinga wants this seat to rebrand for 2027. So it will depend on how the political dynamics in Kenya will be around that time. If Raila believes he will be in a better position to win the presidency in 2027, I'm seeing Raila Odinga who will just resign to contest for the presidency. And by that time, I strongly believe he will be a formidable force having served as the CEO of Africa. That's what I'm seeing here, ladies and gentlemen. So this new directive is a good news to Rail Odinga and his supporters because a lot of rumors and propaganda were being peddled around. And with this new directive, Raila Odinga is now very sure that he has got a very realistic chance of winning that seat. 
let's meet in our next analysis. Thank you. God bless you. God bless Kenya. And before I forget, if you are watching us outside Kenya, drop a comment. Let us know from which part of the globe you are watching us from. And for those who may not know, we are now on TikTok. If you miss us here, check us on TikTok Dennis Odingo, where we also do daily political analysis. Thank you. God bless you. God bless Kenya.